And here's what happened. Let's look at just a graphical representation of our two fill speeds. We've got a fast fill speed going into a fixed hold time. Okay. When we change to the slow fill speed, again, we keep everything else, everything that's not a factor is held constant. So slow fill speed, keep the hold time the same. The challenge was that, so I'm going to overlay, now we're going to overlay those two cycles. Here's the Here's the, the fast fill speed example. Here's the slow fill speed example. And the problem was that the gate sealed somewhere right around in here. What does that mean? That means when we filled fast, we filled fast, packed our knit line together, and then here at the end of hold we, we let go. And now we're no longer holding that knit line together and it can't develop full strength. With the low fill speed, even though the wasn't optimized, we're, we're filling slow, the melt is not being held together as well, but the gate is sealed, so we're, we're maintaining the pressure on that knit line longer. When we went back and used a systematic approach, filled fast, high melt, increased the melt temperature, increased the hold pressure, and sealed the gate, couldn't break the part. And the problem was the customer had spent now spent a spent a couple of weeks on this silly experiment, running parts, pulling testing samples, and with within about an hour of coming in and just following good simple man good manu good processes for setting up a process, we were able to create a result that first of all made sense and second of all, was, was much better than the DOE had, had told us we could achieve. So this is the problem. This is the, when there's, there's simple things that, that, that rules that can be broken in good manufacturing practices using your DOE that give us these totally nonsensical results. Okay? So what we did, how do we, how do we fix this problem? What we... we our, the uh, RJG approach to DOE, what we came up with, is focused around everything that we teach is focused around the four plastics variables. Thinking of the process in terms of the temperature of the melt as it's introduced into the mold, the flow rate of the plastic as it's delivered into the mold, the pressurization of that plastic, and then the cooling rate and time. And so we put that in. Rather than thinking of the process as this black box, we're going to put our flow, we're going to think of our machine conditions affect our four plastics variables, and our four plastics variables determine our part quality. And we're going to build our experiment around this, this philosophy, starting with the physics. How should flow rate affect part quality? How should melt temperature affect part quality? How should plastic pressure affect part quality? Thinking of it from that perspective and then choosing our factors to drive our four plastics variables and analyzing our results around around these concepts. So let's look at an, at an example. This is a, a simple, it's a dome lamp. Goes into, a, I think it was a Chrysler and little car. And we've got a couple of key dimensions here that we're targeting. And this is running in a, I believe it was a polypropylene, it was a crystalline material. So what, is going, what would we expect to drive these dimensions? When we're going to design our experiment and center our process for this part, we, it, we, first we have to design our experiment, and we're going to start by choosing our factors. So. Here's how this works. What we do is we start with our four plastics variables and we say we've got these part dimensions that we're targeting. Which of the four plastics variables do we expect are going to have the biggest impact on, our, on, on these dimensions? Now, we know from experience that the pressure of the plastic inside the cavity has a direct impact on part dimensions. The more pressure, the more plastic we put into the cavity, the larger the dimensions, at least for outside dimensions. 
and so we expect that that's going to drive our dimensions and we also know then then we're going to back from there into what factors should we choose we know that our hold pressure has a very direct impact on pressure inside the cavity we also know that fill speed in a this is a thinner walled part has a higher viscosity material and so the, f the, f the faster we can fill that part the lower the viscosity of the material the lower the the more pressure we can generate inside the cavity and get larger parts with fill speed driving pressure not just flow rate fill speed affects flow rate most directly but it can indirectly affect pressure as well and we know this from our, from scientific molding from decoupled molding all the things that we've taught for years barrel temperature has a similar effect as we raise the barrel temperature the viscosity of the material goes down it's easier to flow that means it's easier to pack into the mold so we can get higher pressures all right so this is a so these are some factors we'd want to consider as part of our experiment we also know because this is a crystalline material that the cooling rate is likely to have a significant effect on part dimensions with the crystalline material the temperature of the mold the cooling rate affects the degree of crystallinity the slower the part the, the higher let's see let's walk through this the higher the mold temperature the slower the parts cooling the more time the material has to form crystals during cooling the higher the crystallinity and therefore the more shrinkage we get so higher mold temperatures affect cooling rate making smaller dimensions because the part crystallizes more this is very common in acetal parts with gears for example and we know that this is this is driven largely by mold temperature but also by barrel temperature I've left barrel temperature because it's gonna it's it affects both it affects both plastic pressure and cooling rate in our example so you can see how we've started with the four plastics variables look we we don't expect that flow rates directly going to affect this dimension because the floor, we're thinking of in terms of orientation it's not as much of an issue and melt temperature directly isn't going to affect part dimensions this is just based on our experience with these types of parts we expect that plastic pressure and cooler and cooling rate are going to have the biggest impact and from that we've chosen four factors that are likely to have the most impact on our part quality so we go and we run our, our our designed experiment and the results come back and they say what what has the biggest impact on part quality well hold pressure had the biggest impact fill speed had the second biggest impact melt temperature the third and tool temperature didn't affect it much at all we can go and we can use this data now to center the process we'll talk about that in a moment but more important equally important maybe not more important but equally important let's go back for a second to this model here which had the biggest impact plastic pressure or crystal or cooling rate and crystallization we saw that hold pressure and fill speed had the biggest impact mold temperature had practically no impact so what we know about this part from this experiment we 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 have pretty good indication that this dimension is driven by pressure and because of that now we can we can take that understanding and not only you understand how hold pressure fill speed melt temperature and tool temperature might affect our part dimension but any other setting on the press that could drive pressure inside the cavity we now understand how that might impact part quality as well so so we've developed a stronger understanding of what's going on inside the the mold through our experiment that we can can use later when we see run into quite part quality problems for troubleshooting okay